Before this video starts for today, I want you guys to know that I'm sorry if I'm gonna be kind of like anger fueled in this video. I typically don't act angry in my videos, but the more that I discuss and talk about this, the more it makes my blood boil, even though like I try to tell myself, hey, don't get too worked up in this video. Just don't get too worked up. And I just, I can't help it. This is just insane what's going on. Next video, I'll be completely calmed down again. So sorry for it in this video, guys, just letting you know ahead of time. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, this is Seath Accord here. And welcome to my newest video for today. For today's video, we're gonna be calling out somebody. Now, before we get into it, this isn't gonna be like a leafy video, or this isn't gonna be like a video where, oh, Seether Hord's going down the drama route because he knows it'll get views. No, this is just, in my opinion, something that I haven't ever really seen within the furry fandom. And I've never seen a fursuit maker act this way before, and I've never really seen a fursuit maker just do things along these lines that is just, in my opinion, so screwed up that they just keep repeating stuff like this over and over and over again, where it just keeps mind boggling me each time it keeps happening. And I just feel like it's important to make a video on this because it is relevant. And also because it's just, this fursuit maker is kind of dangerous with what they're doing with their suits and they just need to get called out on this. This fursuiter is commonly known by a lot of people as LSD fursuits. I believe their actual username is Liquid Sunshine Studios, and that basically means Liquid Sunshine Studios fursuits, but just to make it more short and simple and sweet, LSD fursuits. Now, before I get into my critique about LSD fursuits and just explaining the entirety of the situation involving them, is that I want to disclose that I don't have any ill intentions toward LSD fursuits as a person. I've never had any real interaction with them. My girlfriend Cram, she has had somewhat of an interaction with them on Twitter. So that kind of has influenced this video a little bit with how they're acting on Twitter. But in terms of them as a person, this is more so going to be a critique on how they're handling their fursuit making and their business practices and not them as an individual person. I'm pretty sure IRL in real life, I've heard some people say that they're a decent person, but just with how they're acting online, and how they run a business it's just horrible and i want you guys to know also don't go and witch hunt this person you guys can give them fair criticism online but no bullying or attacking or something like that i don't want to encourage stuff like that it's more just an honest to god critique about this person and how they're handling their fursuit makings and how some of their fursuit business practices are kind of screwed up and dangerous so with that all the way and discuss let's begin now, when it comes to LSD fursuits, I want to disclose that I don't think that there's someone that doesn't have talent with their fursuits. There are definitely issues that I have with how they produce their fursuits, but they do seem to be someone that has talent. They seem to be someone that has a good, at least sense of knowledge of like arts and crafts and sewing and everything like that. So to an extent, they know what they're doing. Again, to an extent. I think there's someone that has at least somewhat skill of like making fursuits and like if you ask them like simple questions like, hey, how do you do this to make a fursuit? Hey, what's the base? What's a resin? What's foam? They'll know what those are. But now I'm going to get into the issues with them as a whole and when it comes to their fursuit making, their scams, and their drama. Now the first major problem with their fursuits is the fact that when it comes to the design of the foam base, it turns out that LSD fursuits stole their template design they used for their fursuit foam bases. They actually stole it from another fursuit maker known as Splinter Fox. So that's pretty screwed up that like your entire like base for pretty much all the fursuits you make are pretty much copied from another fursuit maker. I can understand maybe being inspired by some, but when it's just flat out copying and everything like that, it's just really wrong in my opinion when it's just something where you feel like it's just okay to fully rip off someone. Again, inspiration and tributes fine, but just flat out copying to the full extent. I can understand there might be some like copyright issues with that as well. So I don't know if that could be like a legal battle. Probably not. Splinter Fox seems all right. They haven't really released a statement from what I've known about this whole situation. So I hope it doesn't get any worse. But again, it's just... It's not good in my opinion to just flat out steal a design instead of just in getting inspired by it. The next major issue that I see with LSD fursuits is that there are tons of photos and videos of evidence of people calling out LSD fursuits who commission them that they see major problems with the fursuit when they get them in. Now the most common issue that I could see maybe would make more sense is the fact that when they would get in these certain parts and everything like that for their fursuit, be it like just any part like the fursuit head or the feet paws or the hand paws, 
they would break or rip or the sewing and fabric for them would just be destroyed within the first day of use when it comes in the mail. Now that could possibly be either a mistake on their part where it wasn't intended or they just didn't put any care into and were just trying to bust out the first suit as fast as they could and ship it to get the money. Who knows? I'm going to leave that up for debate with you guys. But again, like I would be pretty pissed off if I spent a ton of money on a fursuit and I could maybe understand if it starts breaking down after like a couple months or a year. But on either the first week or the first day that the fursuit starts falling apart when it comes in the mail, it's just unacceptable in my opinion. You'll see the fur falling off. You'll see holes cut. You'll see stitches in the fabric that weren't sewed together properly. The next two pieces of evidence of issues with their fursuits that came out is in my opinion the most screwed up one and I would ask myself why the heck would you have let this happen with your fursuit the first instance of what the hell from this fursuit maker is one of the people that commissioned LSD fursuits posted an image where they found rabbit poop inside the fursuit I assume LSD fursuits had a pet rabbit and maybe they accidentally pooped in it but you gotta check to make sure there's not fecal matter within a fursuit. Because imagine if you buy a fursuit with poop inside of it from any animal or any human, and you put the fursuit head on and that stuff starts getting in your eyes and on your skin, hope you enjoy getting possibly malaria. The last thing I would have to ask myself when I buy a fursuit is, hmm, am I gonna make sure that this fursuit maker is not gonna end up accidentally giving me malaria? You should never have to ask yourself that question when you're commissioning a fursuit maker. The second thing that I found that was really screwed up with this fursuit maker, and this has to be, in my opinion, way more dangerous than a freaking piece of rabbit poop inside the fursuit head, is another fursuit maker found a piece of metal within the fursuit head. Now you might be asking yourself, Seether, why the hell would LSD fursuits put a piece of metal within the fursuit head? They put it within the mouth so that way it could prop up the mouth to make it more like it was moving, I believe. Quote, quote me on that if and correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong on that. But it was something to do with keeping the mouth movement aligned to make it kind of like help with like the realism with the smile and the fursuit head, I believe. But this was just a sharp ass piece of metal that could cut you and stuff. Thankfully, the person didn't get cut from what I knew of. This is some like Five Nights at Freddy's Chuck E. Cheese animatronic stuff where, yeah, it looks all cute, like the costume and everything. But then you open up, there's just like a bunch of barbed wire and metal and animatronic parts and robotic parts to it. And I'm just like, don't put metal inside a fursuit head because you can just imagine putting on the head and your face gets cut up or your lip or tongue gets cut. Who knows? Can your tongue get cut? Can your tongue bleed? I'm not sure on that, maybe. Again, I would maybe more so understand like having fursuit pieces fall apart from like bad sewing or stitching. And that's more excusable in my opinion because maybe like, oh, maybe they're just new at this. But having fecal matter and also having pieces of metal in the fursuit head that could potentially give you malaria or cut you up, that's just unacceptable. And I've never heard of a case of a fursuit maker doing this for their customer. The next thing that LSD fursuits has done that's also more of like what the hell and it's not more so on the physical sense of like what the hell with endangerment to their customers but more so just being scumbaggy and being like a scammer is the fact that there was this person who wasn't even a furry it was a person who had this kind of independent business where he was like a rapper for kids and everything like that who wanted to have make a fursuit out of their giraffe character that was like rapping for kids and everything and they were like okay i'll find one of these fursuit makers and i'll commission them for my giraffe rap fursuit here's what fully happened lsd fursuits got the money from this non-furry person who wanted a fursuit for their business lsd fursuits shipped out the fursuit to the wrong address lsd fursuits then shipped the fursuit back to themselves not to the commissioner wouldn't give the commissioner their money back and then tried to sell the fursuit somewhere else online to another person. LSD fursuits never gave their money back to this commissioner. Thankfully, the person who commissioned the fursuit got their money back, but not through LSD fursuits, however. They had to complain to PayPal and got a refund from PayPal, so it's probably going to hurt or damage uh, LSD fursuits on PayPal in the future. But still, like, that's so scummy. Like, what? This is just a horrible business practice that is going to instantly get you an artist beware, and it's definitely happened. And even the more screwed up thing is that you, you would expect maybe something shady like this for a fursuit maker to do to a furry but this wasn't even a furry this was a non-furry person that would have been like hmm furries are really great it was nice they can help out my business and everything but no this we got the one really shitty fursuit maker to help out a non-furry to have the general public have another reason to hate on the furry fandom one more thing important to note about this is that LSD fursuits at this current moment from when I last checked is still trying to sell this fursuit 
fursuit to somebody else and it's just even after all the drama and accusations have come out they're still doing it and when they get accused of this on instagram or twitter they block whoever has anything negative to say about them even my girlfriend Cramshie was blocked from lsd fursuits and she didn't even like curse at her she wasn't like being overly critical of her she was just like hey this is probably not a good business practice this is not a good idea boom instantly blocked no response and they just are blocking everybody and they just can't take criticism on stuff like this i just think it's frustrating how there can be people be it on youtube or twitter or instagram that will just block comments or tweets or whatever that just are negative. You know, the least that LSD fursuits could do is just not respond and just let them pile up and everything. At least I would have more respect for them rather than just blocking people instantly because you just can't take criticism on that. And I just can't understand the reasoning because you can't really find that much of a response from them, at least from my research of what their reasoning for this is. They just boom, block, and they can't take the criticism. And it's definitely going to hurt their business. And I can definitely see with all the new artist bewares popping up for LSD fursuits of them just probably having hits to their business and no one's going to commission them anymore so they just dug their own grave right there but even with all the instances of rabbit poop in the fursuit heads and metal pieces inside the fursuit head and scamming a non-furry who just wanted a fursuit for their business and also stealing designs from another fursuit maker for your whole business and concept of your fursuits it's just mind boggling because I think to myself, what's the next crazy messed up thing they're going to do? And they just add something new to it each time because like I think like, OK, they'll stop here. But no, then they go further a next step and then another step and then another step of something crazy. It's just it's horrible. Anyways, I don't like the fact that I'm coming off as like very rude and mean in this video to LSD fursuits, but it's dangerous what they're doing and it's messed up that they scammed a non-furry and they deserve to get called out on this there's been a few other youtubers that have made videos on this and i feel like i need to put in my say as well on all of this again i'm not saying that lsd fursuits is a terrible person i don't like to think that people are horrible I just think that they're very flawed and they're really bad with handling business and criticism. So hopefully if LSD Fursuits is watching this video, maybe there's a little spark in them that can hopefully just maybe kind of wake up and like this can knock some sense into them and maybe they can improve for the future. I don't know. Probably not people will be like, oh, well, she won't. I'm just like, I know probably not, but it's not going to hurt to at least try. Anyways, that has been my video today on LSD fursuits. I'm giving my whole say on it and why I think they need to get called out for all of this. How do you guys feel about LSD fursuits as a whole as a fursuit maker? Do you guys feel like the way that they handled the situation is good? Do you guys feel like they didn't handle the situation well at all? Is there different things they could have done in terms of handling the situation? Let me know down in the comment section down below. If you enjoy my content and want to further help out my channel, please consider donating to me on Patreon as well as my coffee. Also, please consider smashing that like button, turn that notification bell, and subscribing all together. I've been Seath Record and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye everyone. Freaking rabbit poop and metal in the fursuit heads. I've never heard of that before. My god. Um all right. Nice. Get some coinage. Good coins, money. Ah. Oh my god, that sounded kind of racist towards Jewish people. I don't mean to do that. Okay. I did not say the Holocaust was good. No. That was crazy, racist. Okay. I deserve that for being racist. For saying racist things! Okay. Doesn't want to give me a break. It won't kill me, but it'll make me learn not to be racist.